Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about the fastest way to level a deep bite or a curve of speed. Should you use a fixed bite plate? Should you use anterior bite turbos? Should you use an RCS wire, reverse curve of speed wire? And I have tons of videos, probably dozens on all these topics, if not more. Please watch them first. This is just a quick recap. In order to watch those, go to my YouTube channel. To get there, put in your search bar in YouTube, Straight Smile Solutions. It'll take you to my YouTube channel. You can scroll down and go to my braces playlist or you could search by keywords or whatever you want to do and watch all the videos I have on these topics. This is just a quick recap. Fastest way, I would say, goodness. I mean, to me, a lot of it depends on if the patient is growing or not. If the patient is growing, I prefer to do the fixed bite plate with the posterior box elastics. Um, or if the patient has overjet, because if you have overjet, let's say you're biting back here, when you bite down, it still works. If you have anterior bite turbos, those are only going to project like a millimeter or two or three out, you know, maybe four at max. This can go 10 millimeters back, right? So it works better for overjet cases or cases with like, you know, kind of crowded incisors or things like that. So PBs and box elastics, sorry, box elastics and um, bite plates work really well in growing kids. Um, in braces patients and adults that don't have overjet, I'll usually do bite turbos, but they're more work to put on and more work to take off. You know, you have to clean all the glue and drill on it. And, also, it loads the teeth and not the palate, and it can make the teeth loose, especially in like perio patients and stuff. So, you know, not really my favorite idea, but it is a little bit more discreet and you don't have as many speech issues, but you will get used to the speech issues. It takes a few weeks. You have to practice, practice, practice. Just like when you first get a retainer or like a traditional retainer, you know, the ones with the plastic and the colors and stuff and the wires. When you first got them, you talk really funny and then you get used to it. And as long as you wear it all the time, you know, for a few weeks, it goes away. You're totally fine talking with them and no one's going to even notice. Um, in terms of the RCS wires, that's a whole different thing. Yes, it helps to open a bite. I always make sure my sevens or my second molars are bonded first. I do those. This is just my opinion. Other people might do it different ways at the very, 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 very end. And that's never my primary way to, way to open a bite. Never, ever. That is only in situations where, for whatever reason, I couldn't use a P, uh, I couldn't use a bite plate. I couldn't use anterior bite turbos. Or I did, and we had some relapse, and it just were at the end of treatment. Everything's straight everything's done bite is fixed ap is fixed you know overjet negative overjet is fixed um transverse is fixed alignment is fixed we've done everything we've done 99 out of 100 things the only thing is left besides the case being perfect is the bite is a tiny bit deep that's when i use a reverse curve wire so that's just my suggestion and remember watch all my videos on rcs wires before you think about doing them because danger 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 weird things can happen and i talk about that more in the other videos all right thanks so much